Well, hello everyone and welcome to this lesson about amazing new inventions. Now, I'm using the word new but I'm not talking about just things that were invented in the last year. I'm actually going to be talking about new inventions from the last 10 or 20 years in this English lesson. Some of these things are really new for me but they may be things that you've known about for a few years already. So, I'm using the word new um quite liberally. So, you'll be seeing uh, a lot of things that maybe were invented 20 years ago or just this past year or five years ago. But in this English lesson, we're going to talk about amazing new inventions. I did wanna mention that this lesson also has a study pack. You can find it at my website, bobthecanadian.com and there's a link in the description below as well. In the study pack, you'll find the original slides as a PDF and as a PowerPoint and a whole bunch of worksheets that you can use if you're an independent learner or you can use in your classroom if you're an English teacher. GPS. So, this was the first thing I thought of when I was designing this lesson. The first thing I thought of was the global positioning system. Even when I drive somewhere uh and when I know how to get there, sometimes I still use GPS because it tells me how long it will take me and more importantly, it will tell me if there is a traffic jam or if there is a problem on the route that I normally take and it will tell me to go a different way. So, if I drive to Toronto, if I go to Toronto, that's how we say it by the way, Toronto to see a Blue Jays game, I still use GPS or the global positioning system. We just say GPS to get there because sometimes it will know that there's an accident on the highway I'm on 10 or 20 kilometers ahead and it will tell me a different route to go. So, GPS a very, very cool thing. When I was a kid, we just had maps, paper maps. I remember my parents looking at a map and trying to figure out how to get somewhere and sometimes the map was old and it didn't have new roads on it. So, GPS has certainly improved our ability to travel easily. And then, of course, this one. I think the first real smartphones showed up around 2006, 2007. We call them cell phones or mobile phones or smartphones. Mostly though, people just call it a phone now. We've been using these for so long that they are just what you call a phone. So, I know when I talk to my students, they have a phone. Sometimes they buy a new phone. We don't often say cell phone or mobile phone or smartphone anymore. Uh we just say phone uh because that's what it is. This might be one of the biggest inventions in the last 10 or 20 years is the smartphone. In fact, many of you right now are watching me on your phone. So, it has allowed us to do many things uh, including GPS by the way. Translation software. So, I don't know how I would go through my day without using something like Google Translate. Translation software has helped us to understand each other better. Right now, I use Google Translate quite a bit because I have been putting videos onto a website in China called Billy Billy. And in order to understand the interface, I need to use Google Translate. I need to use translation software to translate the page for me. Um so, I find this a very, very useful tool. I'm sure a lot of you do as well. My other main use of Google Translate or translation software is when I don't know a word in French and if I'm having a conversation with my French speaking partner, I will quickly look a word up. I use it as a dictionary. Very handy translation software. And then, of course, here is a more recent one, AI or artificial intelligence. So, recently, there are things like chat GPT and other platforms where computers have become so smart that they can act as if they are human. AI has come a long way just in the last two years. In fact, it's becoming a problem at school because students can use AI to do their homework for them. Artificial intelligence or AI has become so smart and so good at writing that students are now using it to do their work for them. Not a good thing. But AI would be one of the more recent cool inventions. So, this actually is new <laughs> of all the things I'm talking about. It's very, very new. 
And then of course, you have the 3D printer. So, these have been around for a while. Our school bought its first 3D printer about seven or eight years ago. A 3D printer allows you to print something in three dimension. Um if I wanted to print out something to hold my key, I could measure this and I could print something using a 3D printer and then use that to hold my key when I come home. Um they're pretty cool. For a long time, we just had normal printers that printed on paper but now you can print things in 3D. By the way, 3D stands for three dimensional. So, you have three dimensions when you look at something. We live in a three dimensional world. Um so, you have length and width and height. So, if you wanted to print a little statue of Bob the Canadian, you could do that on a 3D printer or a three dimensional printer. We don't ever call them three dimensional printers. We just call them 3D printers. Now, a few of my relatives have gotten laser eye surgery. So, normally, if you have trouble seeing, you wear glasses, right? Or you wear contact lenses. But if you want, you can go and have laser eye surgery and they will use a laser to correct the lens in your eye so that you can focus and see properly again. So, I would say this is a pretty cool new invention. It's probably been around for about 20 years. It's been around a lot longer than um chat GPT um but it has become more common in the last five years. More and more people I know have gotten laser eye surgery. Um I'm not sure I would ever get laser eye surgery though. I'm not I'm not sure. I don't I I don't need glasses except for reading but uh the idea of someone using a laser on my eye, it's a little terrifying. And then there's robotic surgery. So, there's this interesting thing where um doctors or surgeons, a surgeon is a doctor who does surgery. They can use a robot when they're doing surgery. So, their movements are more precise. So, robotic surgery is often used for heart surgery. So, the doctor might use a robot to help them do the surgery because the robot moves in a much more precise and accurate way. Humans, sometimes we um you know, we our hands might shake a little bit or we might make a little mistake and so, the robot helps to do surgery in a way where um that doesn't happen as much. I don't know a lot about robotic surgery. I just know that uh, it is far more commonplace now especially for heart surgery. And then, of course, the electric car or electric vehicle. We've started to call these EVs in English. Sorry, I should have put that on the slide. The letter E and the letter V. So, uh, the government is encouraging people to buy EVs, electric vehicles. A lot of people have electric cars. At my school, the parking lot is slowly starting to get more electric cars. I think there's three or four now. There's about 40 cars there uh on any given day and usually two or three of them are either a Tesla or another type of electric vehicle or electric car. So, certainly, we are starting to move into a world where there are other options besides the gas engine. We now have electric cars or electric vehicles and we do sometimes say EV. And then, of course, some of them can drive themselves a little bit to varying degrees. That means that some are really good at autopilot on a highway and we have cars now um that can drive themselves as well. So, if you have um a Tesla with a really good uh self-driving software package installed, it the car will drive itself in some situations. So, I don't know a lot about this. I think it would be really cool if I am driving on the highway to simply put the car in autopilot and let it drive itself. Uh that would be cool but cer- certainly when I was a kid, the idea of a self-driving car seemed like science fiction. It seemed like something that would never ever happen but we do now have self-driving cars in the world and they are pretty common. So, this is one that I kind of made up myself. This is a term by the way. Sorry, I didn't make this up but um the idea of having batteries that last all day, that was not the case when I was a kid. That was not how the first cell phones worked. Um there was a time when batteries weren't very good. Batteries went dead very very quickly 
10 or 20 years ago and it wasn't until we started using lithium ion batteries that we started to see all day battery life or multi day battery life. So, when I say all day battery life, it means I can charge my phone and when I come home, my phone still has 50 or 60 percent of its battery left. That's really, really cool. The very, very first cell phone I had back in the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, I had to charge it halfway through the day. The battery didn't last all day. If I made too many phone calls, the battery went dead very, very quickly. Um also, my very first laptop, the battery only lasted about 40 minutes. Um but now, my laptop, I can use it for two or three days. So, it has all day battery life or multi day battery life. That is very, very cool. I I like that. That's very convenient and very awesome. Video doorbell. Now, I don't have a video doorbell but people I know have video doorbells and they're pretty cool. You hit the doorbell and then they can see you and they can talk to you. Um it's kind of a cool way to find out who's at your front door. It's also nice because they can act as security cameras. So, when you have a delivery, you can see the delivery person drop the package off uh but definitely a pretty cool uh thing to have video doorbell. I might get one at some point but uh when you live out in the country, not that many people come and knock on your door. You usually call before you go to someone's house when you live out in the country. Um but yes, video doorbell, very cool item. And fingerprint scanner. So, my last phone had it on the back. You would just put your finger on the back. This phone has it like right on the screen like this one does. Um fingerprint scanners are pretty cool. One of my first phones, I had to punch in a code when I wanted to use my phone and then I had to remember my code or my PIN number but a fingerprint scanner allows you to just touch your phone and it will open. It will unlock and you can use it. So, a very, very cool thing to have. And then there's also, of course, facial recognition. I don't use that on my phone. Like, I don't look at my phone to unlock it but um certainly facial recognition is another way to do that. Um I do know my brother has security cameras on his house and the cameras can recognize his face. So, when he walks past his camera, he doesn't get an alert because this it just knows it's him. It can recognize his face. So, facial recognition, very, very cool. And then streaming. So, this is a pretty common one. Um this started of course with Netflix and now there's a lot of different streaming options. Um when I sit down at night, I can watch live TV like a baseball game or a basketball game or I can watch um just a regular broadcast, something that's being sent through the air or through the wires um or I can watch something on a streaming service like Netflix and then it comes over the internet. So, many of you I'm sure sit down sometimes and watch something from a streaming service to help practice your English. And of course, streaming is when the TV show comes from a computer on the internet through the internet to your TV or computer or phone and then you can watch it there. I should actually define the word when I'm talking about it, right? And then there's something called crowdfunding. So, crowdfunding is when if you have an idea but you need money in order to kind of make the thing you're thinking of. Let's say you had an idea uh to make a brand new mouse trap, something to catch mice but you don't have enough money to start making it. You need to buy parts and little tools and machines. You could go on a website like Kickstarter and you could do what's called crowdfunding. Crowdfunding is when a whole bunch of people give you money in order to help you make a new invention or new product. It's very, very cool. Usually, in exchange for giving money, you get the first item as they start to make the item. You get the first one or you may get you might get other rewards as well. So, let's say let's say I wanted to write a book but I knew it would take me a year to write my book. I would need to quit my job. So, I might go to a crowdfunding website like Kickstarter and say, hey, Bob the Canadian wants to write a book but in order to write a book, he needs a certain amount of money and if you give him this amount of money, you'll get a copy of the ebook as soon as he's done writing it. I would use crowdfunding to do that. I'm not doing that by the way. I might in five years but not right now. 
Bluetooth speakers. These are everywhere. A Bluetooth speaker is a speaker that plays music out loud from your phone. Um these started to show up at schools a few years ago. First, we had students wearing a lot of headphones and earbuds but eventually, students started to buy Bluetooth speakers. A Bluetooth speaker has all day battery life. You can play music usually eight hours or 16 hours um and it allows people to enjoy music together. So, at school, you'll sometimes see two or three students walking and one of them will have a Bluetooth speaker clipped to their belt or they'll be carrying one and they'll be playing music and they'll all be listening to it. Pretty cool. We have a Bluetooth. We actually have this one um and Jen uses it on the farm quite a bit. Actually, sorry. My one of my kids has this one. We have a different one I think but it's quite handy when Jen goes out to the flower field. She can play music. VR which stands for virtual reality. Now, again, I've only tried this twice I think. I played Beat Saber. It was pretty fun. Um I think that I'm gonna wait until the quality gets a lot better before I jump into this more um but playing VR games, virtual reality games does interest me a bit. Um I'm just not sure if it will um if I'll feel a little bit sick when I do it. You sometimes get queasy is the word we use. You might feel a little queasy when you play a VR game but virtual reality would be you put on VR a VR headset or VR goggles. I would call it a VR headset and then you see a different world around you. You see a digital world that you can interact with. So, instead of playing a video game on a screen, you you are in the game. You feel like you are in the game. Now, these were not around a number of years ago. Um they've obviously been around for more than 10 years probably um but this is relatively new. Someone figured out that if you put four propellers on a device, you can make it fly and you can make it very very stable. I don't have a drone but Jen would love it if we bought a drone uh because its main purpose is to fly and take pictures or take video of what it sees um and for the flower farm, it would be really fun to have a drone to show people what it looks like from above but drones weren't around. I mean, I didn't see a drone myself until five or six years ago. A student did a project and they brought in their drone. That was the first time. Maybe a little longer than that. It was the first time that I I saw a drone. They do have a drone now. It's it's a selfie drone. So, it will fly up and then it will it'll it'll make a video while you walk around and talk. I think I'm interested in that one. I think I could make some pretty cool English lessons with that type of drone. So, again, a drone is something that flies. Um you fly it with your phone as a controller or it comes with a controller but it's also smart enough to fly itself a little bit. You know, when you're done using it, it can come back to you. You can tell it to hover in one spot. You can tell it to rotate. So, very cool way of making uh videos or taking pictures. And then, of course, there's something called an action camera. So, when digital cameras first came out, if you tried to ride your bike and make a video, the video would be very, very shaky but eventually, a company called GoPro and there's a number of different kinds now uh came out with what's called an action camera. An action camera takes very stable footage. It takes very stable video. That means the video doesn't shake. It's designed so that even if your head is moving or if you're wearing one on your chest and you're bouncing around on your bicycle, um it creates a really nice smooth video for people to watch. If you watch the video of Brent and I zip lining, we both used GoPro action cameras to make that video uh and those cameras allowed us to uh record ourselves in a way where um the the video is very smooth. It doesn't shake at all. It was amazing. So, Uh, I have ordered an action camera by the way. It's supposed to come today. I don't know how I'm going to use it yet to make English videos but I ordered a DJI Action 4. It's supposed to come today. We'll see. I'll play around with it and let you know how it goes. And then, of course, the smartwatch. So, you can buy a smartwatch from Apple. There are other companies as well that make a smartwatch. A smartwatch does more than tell time. Okay. A smartwatch uh knows what your heart rate is. It knows how much your heart is beating. Uh your smartwatch can count your steps. Your smartwatch can 
display an incoming message or buzz or make a noise when someone is phoning you on your phone. Uh so, smart watches are very very cool. I have never had one. A lot of my students have smart watches now. Um I've always had a fitness tracker. I'll talk about that in a sec but a smart watch is a very cool device. Let's just say that does way more than just tell time. Very very cool. And there are things now called smart rings. This is just a normal ring. This is my wedding ring but you can buy smart rings now which also can uh, monitor your heart rate. Uh they can tell you how well you're sleeping at night. Um these are interesting to me but they seem a little bulky still. Like my ring is very thin and light. I don't know if this will focus on it. Um whereas a smart ring is thicker and it might Yeah, I might not like the feeling of wearing it and they're a little bit expensive now too. So, I'm gonna hold off buying a smart ring until they're cheaper and smaller and thinner and maybe they'll do more too. Fitness tracker. So, I wear a fitness tracker. It counts my steps. It has built-in GPS. If I go for a walk, it it memorizes my route. Like when I get back, I can see on a map where I walked. It tells me how fast I walked, how fast it took me or how long it took me to walk one kilometer. So, many, many people wear fitness trackers. Probably one of the most common ones would be a Fitbit uh or an Apple Watch acts as a fitness tracker as well. Um next day delivery or same day delivery. When I was a kid, if you ordered something, it took six or seven days for it to arrive. Now, if I order something in the morning, Sometimes, it comes the same day and if it doesn't come the same day, it comes the next day. So, next day delivery or same day delivery is a relatively new thing. Um honestly, when I was in my 20s even, if I wanted a book from France, it took a week or two for the book to arrive. Now, if I want a book from a French author, I have it on my Kindle like within 10 seconds. So, it's it's cool. Um but yes, even if uh let's see, we ordered a timer the other day like a kitchen timer and I ordered it at 10 in the morning and it came at four o'clock in the afternoon and I live out in the country. So, next day delivery became very common over the last five years and now same day delivery is becoming quite common. Very, very cool. So, we do not have a robot to mow our lawn. We do not have a robot to vacuum our house but they are becoming more common. People will buy a robot. A robot is a machine that does the job of a human. A machine that's able to think a little bit. Not really. What would be a better way to describe it? A machine that has some logic and programming to do a job or task. Someday, I think my lawn will be mowed by a robot. I think that's just going to be how it works. Someday, my house will probably be mowed or not mowed. My house will be vacuumed by a robot. So, again, robots are becoming more common. Um robots that look like humans, I think are still very far away but robots like this or in factories, most of our cars are made by robots working on assembly lines. Uh earbuds. So, when I was younger, you had headphones, okay? And there was a wire. And then eventually, we had earbuds with a wire and now we have earbuds or AirPods if you're buying them from Apple um, where they just go in your ear and there's no wire. See, I still have the old kind, right? With the wire (laughs) but definitely, this is becoming more common. Uh most students have these. Most teenagers have these now. They don't have the old kind with the wire. This is very, very common. Foldable phones. So, I don't know what I think about these but there are a couple foldable phones now on the market. Maybe three where instead of just a normal phone which is this size, you can open the phone up. It's a folding phone or a foldable phone and I think we're going to go with the word foldable in English. I bet you someone at some point, one of the manufacturers will just say this is called a foldable but we'll see but for now, people are referring to them as folding phones or foldable phones um and they're pretty cool. Um I would be worried though that eventually it would break 
But a foldable phone is of course a phone that you can open and close and I think it has a screen on the outside as well. A gimbal. Where is my gimbal? Oh, it's right here. So, yeah, I bought a gimbal. Um, I was gonna show you how it worked but I'm not quite ready to do that. Um, a gimbal is a device that makes a camera or phone move very, very smoothly. If I try to hold my phone to make a video, I'm a pretty shaky person but if I use my gimbal, here, let me see if I can get this hooked up live while we're watching, while I'm making a video. Um, if I use my gimbal, it will stabilize it for me. See if I can, yeah, sorry, I don't have it in the screen but you can see as I move this, I can flip it too, I think, yeah. It keeps the phone relatively level. <laughs> I'm demonstrating this live. Um and as I move, the phone itself doesn't move. So, it's a very cool new thing. Um again, I used this to make the lesson at the gym and I used this yesterday uh to make a lesson um in the garden. Let's learn English in the garden. It's gonna be called but a gimbal has three axes and it's used to stabilize. So, when you make a video, it's very, very smooth. Instead of me, you know, going outside with my camera and it's shaking a lot, the gimbal um makes it much smoother. So, thanks members for helping me buy things like that to make better English lessons. We talked about this a little bit. You can now read on a device or on your phone. You can read an ebook. So, instead of buying a paper book, you can read an ebook and then LED light bulbs. So, this is how we say it LED. We say each letter. You know, we used to have incandescent bulbs and uh, those used a lot more electricity. LED bulbs use far less electricity. I wonder if we can see on this package. So, these use far less energy. So, they use, they use, if you used an incandescent bulb, it would use 60 watts and I think it says it only uses 6.5 watts. I can't quite see. Uh, it's a little blurry for me. Maybe you can see it. it might say 9.5. Sorry, the picture's blurry. Um but LED light bulbs have helped us save money on electricity but the last article I read said the world's a brighter place now because of LED bulbs. So, now we can make it brighter or light out at night for less money. So, now we're using more light bulbs to make it brighter at night. So, I'm not sure if it's backfiring but certainly LED bulbs have made the world a brighter place at night. Touch screen. So, I almost forgot this one but I mean, if you have an iPad or a smartphone, uh, in even some computers, some laptops, you can touch the screen. Like, you don't have to use just the mouse or the keyboard anymore. You can just touch the screen to do things. Um so, I don't have a touch screen on my computer uh but I do have a tablet and it's a touch screen obviously and my phone, all of us use phones. When you use a phone, you just use your finger to use the phone. So, touch screens. Even my camera has a touch screen. Um what else? Um trying to think. My my other camera has a touch screen. Like, it's just very common now. In fact, my son has a camera and it doesn't have a touch screen and it seems weird that you can't just touch the screen to do stuff. So, very cool, cool invention. And then payment systems. So, obviously, years ago, you just needed money, right? Like, you needed to get out your wallet and you needed to have, oh, there is actually money in my wallet. That's, that's strange. Um, but now, you just use cards or you use your, your your watch or you use your phone. I mean, there are so many ways to pay now. Um at school, sometimes I forget my lunch and I can buy lunch at school. If I don't have money, I can just pay with my I can pay with my Fitbit. I can pay with my phone. I can pay with my bank card. Um there are many, many different payment systems for me to use. And then there's something called cryptocurrency. This is something I don't know a lot about but this is money in a digital form. So, they use something called the blockchain to memorize and record all transactions that are done between people who own Bitcoin or one of the other cryptocurrencies. It's a new way of exchanging money 
but it's kind of a unique thing right now. Like in Canada, you can't really buy things with Bitcoin at a store. We do have some like Bitcoin cash machines where you can buy Bitcoin and there are some businesses where you can use cryptocurrency to buy stuff but the average person doesn't know how to do it, okay? So, it's it's so new that not everyone knows how to do it.